Hi, welcome to part three of this tutorial series that it's looking more like a course already. On this part, we will be creating this cream that it has uh, on top. If you have any suggestions or you think I'm explaining too much or too little or whatever, uh, the only way I have to know this is, is if you leave a comment or also if you have any questions about uh, the things we are doing here, feel free to comment or join the Discord channel and I will be happy to help. This is where we left on the last video. For the ones that didn't uh, create, uh, this is the how the optional part looks like. Since we don't see this, it was something that you could skip, but I wanted to explain a bit more about that. And since we did that, uh, I think it's a good opportunity to explain another node. Uh, we will use a switch and on our switch we can connect one here for the false answer and one here for the true answer. We have a switch for different uh, input types. I'm using the geometry because that's what, why I want to, what I want to switch. We can use it with almost anything. And you can also expose this if you want. I'm not going to do it at this mo moment. We plug this and now you can see if we switch, we have one or the other. Okay, we have our cup or paper here. We have our dough. Now we will uh, continue with the cream on top. To start, we will again maybe disconnect this because we want to have a better look at what we are doing and to create this shape we need two things one the curve that will uh, be followed to create this uh, cream and the profile of that curve so we will start by, with a spiral we connect this and we have our spiral for this spiral we want the radius of the cupcake to control the bottom of this spiral. So I will use our radius here and connect it to the start radius. And we can adjust the end that will be uh, zero. I also want three rotations and I want to have control over my height. So I will expose that. Cream height. You can set these values to whatever you want. Now we can control from here, maybe a bit more than one. We will later adjust this radius. We will subtract a bit or multiply it because we don't need the cream to reach the complete border. So we will do that when we finish. Now for the profile, we want I will use a star. I used uh, these values. You can later change them. This one was 0 0.15 and this value was 0 0.2. Now we can use a curve to, to mesh. I plug my curve and my profile curve will be my star. So as you see, we start to get something similar to what we want. First, I want to be able to control the radius of this. So take a look here. If we plug the spiral to the viewer and we go to the control points, you will see that we have already an attribute called radius and it's the same for each control point. Let's make some room here. Okay, what we need here is to change the radius along this curve with an RGB curve. And to do that, we need a, an index or a number, a value in the range of zero to one. What we can use here, it's the index because we have a, an increasing number that will reach, that will go from zero to 96. And we can use that to create uh, our mask. But we need to change that range to a range of zero to one. So what we are going to do is to create, to add an index node 
and we will divide this. We have uh, three rotations of 32, so we have 96 different uh, points and the zero, but we are going to use 96 here. <clears throat> and let's check with an uh, persistent store attribute. We will name this check, for example. We plug this here and we have to now at this point see what's going on. We have the check that goes from zero to one. And that's exactly what we need uh, on our RGB curve. So I will leave this here for now. I will use a RGB curve. So we are putting the here a mask that does go from zero to one in, in this direction. So if we change this to radius, we will overwrite radius. You see what's going on is we have zero value and at the end we have one. So zero value here and one there. Now we need to play a bit with, uh, with the curve. I want at the start a value of zero, so this is closed. Then we can add a point like this. <clears throat> A point around there and, and the last point I will bring it down again so this is closed and I will play a bit with this to get more of a tip that looks fine now I need a few more things I will multiply my radius so this is not the size of the of the entire cupcake but something that it's on top so math, later we will adjust this, multiply, and maybe 0 0.8. We will adjust, this is a bit too much, height. I accidentally disconnected the cream height here. Okay. Now we need, we have control over the height and also on the radius. Now, the other thing I want, well, you can play with this and see if you want the, the star to be different. I also added a bit of variation here, so the cream is not all the same. And now this value is limited to one, but we can multiply that. And we have a control over the thickness. Another thing I did is to take the tip of this cream and push it up. So to do this, we will add another, we will use another persistent attribute. I will call this tip. You can expose this value if you want. For the tip, we will use another RGB curve. We will reset the curve. I will plug the same value here. And in this case, I want everything at the same place and uh, I will push up a bit at the end. So now we have this mask that we created that will only take the last part and will apply m stronger uh, mask or closer to one to the tip and a gradual decrease in that mask. I will use an attribute mix. And now I want to mix my position with, uh, I will use a combine XYZ and I will use this as my control to add a uh, height or value on C axis. So I, I don't want to mix. Now you have, you can see it. This is uh, basically like a mix RGB node, but for attributes, you can see we have all the same uh, blending modes. And in this case, we are going to use add. So I will add to my current position, okay, this value. So I need to change B to a vector instead of an attribute. 
because that's what we are going to use. And on the last, the result will, will overwrite my position. So at this point, everything moves. But we want to do this with a factor uh, we created here. Now, if we check the tip, you will see that there are negative values. This is important to understand because since we are using auto handles here, this is a curve and it goes below zero. So it's important that you select this point and you will switch to vector handle and the same here. And now we will have zero until it starts uh, rising here. And you can add another point if you want to do it like this. And why I'm using uh, an attribute here instead of just plugging this on the factor? Because if we plug this, nothing, nothing works. Apparently the factor only takes constant values. So we can add, for example, a value node and it will work. Or any other kind of uh, constant value, but this is not constant. This has a, a mask, a different values. So this doesn't work. Also, if you try, for example, if we try position and separate. So we have, for example, the position on, on C as a mask doesn't work also. So as I told you, apparently the factors only take uh, constant values, but not the attributes. So we will use an attribute as a factor. Factor will be tip. Now we can see how much we want to rise this. And also we can adjust a bit with the curve there. Here I have something that I don't like, but I will wait because I am going to subdivide this and I want to see the the end result before I do some changes here. At this point, we can see we have a normals inverted. So we are going to fix that first. I will use a transform, same, same technique I used before. And I will scale it on minus one on X. So we get this. I will use a subdivision surface. And I will increase this to maybe two. And here we lose a bit of uh, definition, so we, we can also use a store persistent attribute. And I will select edge, increase. I have to click this, so we are using creases. And with this, we can control the strength of that crease. So that looks fine for me. Maybe I will try to fix a bit this tip. Okay, now we will connect to what we had before. And we will adjust a bit. Move it a bit up. Also reduce the this. Maybe not that much. And maybe this is too much to That looks fine. Now if we, for example, change the radius, everything will, will change. We can increase and decrease the cream height. You can also expose the this value and control the tip separately, but for now I will leave it like this. We will create the material now. I will create a new material. Here I just this value and this one. And a subsurf of uh, 0 0.6. And we need to assign this material. So Assign material, white chocolate, and now let's go back to shading. Maybe it's a bit too much. I'm gonna 
In this case, I also added a bit of bump. Okay, and that's our results so, so far. So remember, if you have any doubts, leave in the comments and uh, we will continue in the next video with the next part of this tutorial series. So thanks for watching and see you on the next one. If you want to support this channel and keep it going, you will find the link to my Patreon account and my stores on the description of all my videos. Liking, subscribing and commenting on the videos will also help me reach more people, so thank you in advance.